In this episode of Brainiacs, we're starting in outer space with the meteoroids. These space rocks come in all shapes and sizes, and when they enter Earth's atmosphere and burn up as shooting stars, they're known as meteors. Only the few that survive that perilous journey and make it to the ground are called meteorites. And the funny thing about meteorites, most have a specific cone shape, but why? The question we set out to answer in this latest study was, what is special about this shape with regard to its flight? To answer that, Professor Leif Ristroff and his team from NYU Courant created mock meteorite cones in different shapes and sizes and tested them in their fluid dynamics lab. And we would paint a little bit of dye on them. And it's a fluorescent dye, so it lights up very strongly. And then we just literally dropped this in a tank of water dropped these objects and watched them fly. And here's what they found. The cones that were too narrow sort of flipped and tumbled. The ones that were too broad just sort of swayed back and forth. But the in-between sized cones were just right and flew straight ahead. Do you even remember Goldilocks and the three bears? Anyway, the Goldilocks cones with their just right shape look a lot like the so-called oriented meteorites that are often found on Earth. And these findings may have other implications for aerodynamics research. Now, we love science that proves a point, but sometimes it disproves a theory, like the one that claims our Neanderthal ancestors were really smart. Anthropologists have long believed that Neanderthals had high levels of cognitive development. That's primarily because they've discovered ancient tools made with a birch bark glue. Creating that adhesive tar was thought to be a really complicated process where you had to burn bark in an anaerobic environment, meaning a container without air or oxygen. But wait for it. Turns out that birch tar glue is actually not that hard to make. An international team of researchers, including NYU anthropologists and NYU Tandon engineers, made their own glue in just a few hours right out in the open air. Using a condensation technique, the researchers burned some birch bark right next to river stones placed at a 60 to 80 degree angle. The heat and the flames left a sticky black residue on the overhanging stone. They were able to scrape that glue off and found its molecular characteristics are similar to samples from Neanderthal archeological sites. They even tested the glue by using it to haft a piece of flint into an old school tool. And then using robotic force control technology, they scraped wood to prove its strength. Bottom line, the researchers say making birch tar is so easy, it could have been discovered by accident. So maybe Neanderthals were in fact smart, but their glue making skills don't prove it. And speaking of making things stick, researchers over at NYU Steinhardt are using a surprising tool for science education, comic books. For their study, they used this sequential art series called The World of Viruses, and the stories have a pretty diverse cast of characters. The frozen horror takes place in a village in the midst of a huge flu outbreak in 1918. The Carnival of Contagion combines fantasy and fact to illustrate how measles is one of the most contagious viruses on Earth. Now, the researchers sat in on classes and they talked with teachers about how and why the comic books were used. And the new analysis by Steinhardt professor Camelia Matuk and her team finds that the teachers used the illustrated narratives to not only engage the students creatively, but to also make science exciting to a more diverse group of students. To keep up with more exciting findings from all of our NYU Brainiacs, you can head to nyu.edu news, and of course you can follow us on social. I'm Sapna Parikh, and I'll see you next time.